So Star Wars Outlaws releases in just a few short days and there is obviously a lot of eyes on the game right now as there has been throughout its development. With fans and critics alike eager to see what comes of Star Wars Outlaws, I thought we could go through 10 things that Star Wars Outlaws needs to do right in order to have the launch that they are hoping for. Now, not only is Star Wars Outlaws the first truly open world Star Wars game, but it is also the first of its kind with a story surrounding a scoundrel for the main character. So without lightsabers and without force powers, fans are obviously going to be picky about the game and how it plays. We're also coming off the back of Jedi Survivor last year, which despite some performance issues at launch, was mostly met with a positive response. Jedi Survivor is also releasing on last gen console in just a couple of weeks, so it's safe to say there is plenty of Star Wars gaming to be played in the near future. With the game being hyped as the first truly open world Star Wars game by Massive Entertainment, I thought I would start with that as the first point in this video, but before we dive into it, I would absolutely love it if you guys could smash the subscribe button down below just to help support the channel, as I have a ton more Star Wars Outlaws content coming in the future, and we are very close to 50,000 subscribers. Now, number one, obviously we mentioned it was going to be the open world. Star Wars Outlaws has given itself some massive expectations, no pun intended, to fill. Claiming to be the first true open world Star Wars game, so this is something that they need to deliver on. The game not only needs to have a deep and extensive story to follow with our main character Kay Vess, but you also need extra adventures to go on outside of the main story. I feel as though personally I should be able to jump on my speeder bike and ride around the map for 3, 4, 5 hours doing side missions to upgrade Kay's abilities, earn credits and truly just immerse myself in this world that they've created. The second thing that is extremely important for Star Wars Outlaws is the character development and if you haven't been keeping an eye on the drama surrounding this game, well, let me fill you in. As an open world game, a lot of fans do not like Kay Vess because not for the reasons you would think, it's not because she's a bad character, but that remains to be seen, but because a lot of people believe that they should be able to create their own character for a game of this scale. Now, while character customization is something that is not going to be in Star Wars Outlaws, it makes you think that Kay Vess is gonna have to be really well fleshed out. It's not something that you can just have as an afterthought. She's gonna have to turn from a character that currently a majority of fans playing this game hate into a character that we are all going to love. Now, Sammy Boy said it really well in his video earlier today. Cal Kestis was a prime example of this. It's something that we didn't really know how it was going to go in terms of the character. People were skeptical, people were unsure, and now look at him. He's been turned into one of the really well fleshed out Star Wars characters that we have. And I can safely say that a majority of people actually like where his character has ended up and are excited for what comes in Jedi 3. Now, while I do understand both sides of the argument, my biggest takeaway will be on, again, how well fleshed out Kay's story is, because realistically, right now, we don't know that much about her and her companion, Nyx, so there's a lot riding on her progression throughout the story of Star Wars Outlaws. Also, with other characters, we have ND5, another character that everyone's kind of waiting to see more on. If you don't know who ND5 is, he's a disgruntled yet reprogrammed BX Commando droid. ND5 is sure to have an interesting backstory that we can hopefully dive pretty far into with Star Wars Outlaws. You know, it's not every day that you see a BX Commando droid that can think and operate for himself. So it'll be interesting to see where that all changed and what happened to get him to where he is now. On top of that, we also have all of our Syndicate bosses, including the brand new character Slero, who is head of the Zerik Besh, who seems to be our main villain in this story, as well as a few characters that we are familiar with, like Lady Kira, and Jabba the Hutt. So I'm really curious to see this as well as all of the new characters that they're going to include and just how much this is fleshed out in the game. Moving into number three is the skill tree and upgrades. Now upgrading K in this one is a little different to your typical skill tree. While games like this traditionally opt for a skill tree with abilities being unlocked by skill points like Jedi Survivor, this game is opted for the expert system. Now, experts are here to teach K new skills, however, they aren't always unlocked right away, and each expert has a progression chain that will be unlocked by performing certain metrics with K during your combat. So, for example, taking out three enemies with stealth and then five enemies with melee attacks may unlock something new for you in terms of the progression. Now, with this said, I hope these skills aren't too easily unlocked. 
Like some games just have skill trees that throw skill points at you constantly. But I also kind of hope for some interesting side missions leading us to learning these abilities instead of just being spoon fed new skills. It'd be one thing where, you know, you can just go and unlock them willy nilly, but it'd be nice to actually have a fully fleshed out side mission that is really well written and part of not necessarily part of the story but feels like a part of the story that can help pay with unlocking these new skills now just quickly before we jump into number four i want to say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video game sir game sir creates custom controllers to enhance your gaming experience the team over there was nice enough to send me out their khalid flux xbox controller and I have to say, I am in love with how this controller looks. The transparent front shell, as well as the internal design of this controller, really gives it a premium look to go along with the premium feel. Not only does it look good though, but it also feels good. And the best part is they've even added back buttons onto the controller for extra inputs while gaming, which for someone like me is a must on any controller. If you guys want to pick up a controller for yourself, the link to their website will be down in the description below. Thank you again to GameSir. And with that said, let's get back into the video. Number four on my list is customization. The level of customization is still uncertain in Star Wars Outlaws, but with Jedi Survivor absolutely smashing it with customization, the customization of the blasters, the lightsabers, appearances for Cal and BD-1, as well as everything else, Star Wars Outlaws needs to make sure they have some great cosmetics. What we do know is that we can customize certain aspects of Kay and Nyx, as well as her speeder and her ship, the Trailblazer. As far as Kay goes, all we know so far is that there are a few cosmetics from the deluxe editions, including something that looks like a Lando inspired outfit and also a Han Solo inspired outfit and a few others. So it will be exciting to see if we can customize everything else like her hair, the blaster, her shoes, and different things for Nyx too. Moving on to number five on my list is the side missions. The side missions in any game can be hit or miss. So for Star Wars Outlaws, I'm really hoping that the side missions mean something and aren't just copy pasted around the map or different planets. Variation in these side missions are key because it will add extra playtime for everyone if the side missions keep them engaged to keep exploring more and more. It would honestly be a shame if all of these missions were as simple as fly here, steal that, shoot bad guy, return to NPC and mission end. No, these quests need to be adventures in of themselves that the players can actually look forward to each time they stumble upon a new one. And I really hope that is the case with this game. Number six is the vehicles. Now, I don't have too much to say on the vehicles, so I'll keep it short. However, between the speeder bike and the trailblazer, I hope they're actually enjoyable parts of the game. My main concern for the trailblazer is that it looks just like Starfighter Assault from Battlefront 2, rather than its own flying experience. The fact that this game has boasted about the ground to air combat and dogfighting above each of the game's planets, there is little room for error with this part of the game. So hopefully the team at Massive have done something to give us a fresh look on a heavily repeated gameplay mechanic within Star Wars. Not only that, but the speeder bike, I've heard you can actually do speeder races. So that's kind of interesting there. I'm not too sure how that's gonna work, but I'll let you guys know once I've actually played it. Now, number seven is the syndicates. And I touched on these guys a little bit before. From what we know on the syndicates so far is that they probably are the most important mechanic of the game. Siding with certain syndicates and doing jobs for them much the same will help you to progress in new areas gain trust as well as unlock rewards based on your relationship with them. Now I do have a video popping up on screen in the top right corner if you need more information on each of the syndicates and who they are in the game, but let's just say I will be remaining loyal to Crimson Dawn on my first playthrough. On top of this, the Zeric Besh are brand new to the Star Wars universe as well as the Ashiga clan. And the Zeric Besh do tie directly into the main storyline as they've put a price on Kay's head. So it'll be interesting to see just how far their leader Slero is willing to go to capture Kay and the kind of things we will need to do to avoid being captured by him. Getting on to number eight now is arguably one of the most important aspects of this game, and that is the gunplay. The gunplay in Star Wars Outlaws has already been criticized online for looking clunky and slow, and I haven't played enough of the game yet to say otherwise. 
From what I could tell with my brief hands-on time with the game in Sydney, is that in the beginning, the enemy blasters that you pick up off the ground are extremely useful, and honestly, they feel much better than the default blaster that Kay has. Now, that isn't to say that it can't get better as you upgrade it, because we know there are multiple upgrades available for Kay's blaster, but I'm hoping for something that's really going to turn it into something that feels like it's better than the NPC blasters, and we don't have to rely on using those. But nonetheless, in the early missions of Tashara, you're going to want to be using blasters from the enemies any chance that you get. Another thing that's interesting about the gunplay though is the ability to switch between regular blaster shots, ion shots for droids and shields, and also being able to set your blaster for stun to get some quick and silent takedowns. I just hope the gunplay feels better than it is watching the gameplay as we progress further into the story. Now we're getting towards the end here at number 9 and I have the stealth mechanics and this is interesting because we're so used to being an all powerful Jedi that can just run into a room and start swinging our lightsaber around or force pushing enemies to bully them into submission. In Star Wars Outlaws that is the furthest from the case. Playing as Kay Vess she's not a Jedi, she doesn't have force powers so come time for the enemy to start blasting you are very fragile and vulnerable. This is where stealth is going to be your friend, allowing you to infiltrate bases, steal valuable information or items and slip away before being detected. But now that I'm writing this out of my biggest fear for this game is that there's going to be too much stealth required and for someone who lacks the patience like I do, I like the challenge of running into a fight blasters blazing. I don't know how I'm going to feel if I'm subdued into large periods of stealth gameplay, forcing me to start over when I get caught. So. This is a concern I have and a genuine concern at that, is that if there is too much stealth gameplay, is it going to be too slow for players like myself who are so used to playing as a Jedi and just running headfirst into every situation? I really hope it's still going to be fun and there's a good balance of everything. Now, lastly on the list is the world building and immersion. From what I have seen, the game graphically looks incredible and from my short time on Tashara, the world there is extremely immersive giving you that lived in feeling. From NPCs whispering secrets to sitting down and playing Sabak or gambling on the Favia races, this game really has set up something special with the worlds being created. For me, my excitement is honestly around Kijimi, the planet that we have seen previously in the sequel trilogy, to see just how they expand on the snowy planet, which we know is home to the all new Ashika clan as well. But if the other planets feel and look the same level of detail that Tushara does inside Miragana, I think we are in for a fun time hopping through the different planets that Star Wars has to offer. But in saying that, this is something that does need to be done well and is going to be very important to the well-being of this game. Now, as we come to a close to this video, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed and helped us on our way to 50,000 subscribers. It is crazy how close we are getting, so I appreciate each and every one of you that has already done it. And if you haven't, I appreciate it if you will jump down there and subscribe to the channel for me now. But with that said, I'm going to close off this video. But if you do want to see more on Star Wars Outlaws, there will be some of my other videos covering the game on screen now. Thank you so much for tuning into another one. I will see you guys in the next video. And may the force be with you always.